I posted this video a year ago on the GitHub DualSense controller calibration website. And this is the website that actually fixes your controller and does a lot of different troubleshooting. Since then, there's been a lot of updates on this website. So I just want to do a quick update and show you guys all the new features. So to go to this website, you're usually going to put in GitHub controller DualSense calibration, something like this. And we're going to click here. So this is the website here. I'm going to link it in the description for you guys to make it easier you easier for, for you to find it. Now, this is an important step on this website that I did not go over in my previous video, which I want to touch base on because as you can see, there's a lot of positive feedback on this video, or I would say maybe 99% of the people are happy and they're very pleased that this website help them fix the controller. And there's also a few people that didn't have such good luck and this website actually made their controller worse. First thing is that this website is not affiliated with Sony. This is a GUI uh, website that people and developers are able to build uh, this program. This service is provided without warranty. Use it at your own risk. But there is a step on this website that you can make the changes and you could save it and it will make permanent. So I'll go over that in a, in later on in this video. This website uses analytics to improve the service, keep the battery in basically at all times. The controller will be damaged and unusable if the battery dies or if you take out the battery during the calibration. And the last part, before doing the permanent calibration, try the temporary one to ensure that everything is working well. So this works for a DualShock 4, the DualSense, DualSense Edge, and VR2 controller. A lot of people were asking me in my other video, does this work for Xbox? And no, this website will not work for Xbox. And another thing is, I tried to use this website on my Mac, and this also only works for uh, the Windows PC. All right, so we have it connected to our USB right here. We're going to connect this and we'll find it right here and we will connect this controller. So a few things that this controller will tell you right off the back is going to tell you the serial number, uh, the color, camouflage is going to tell you also the uh, motherboard mo model, which is a BDM 030, which is a third generation. <clears throat> you could also check your buttons on this controller. This test checks the controller's buttons. So I'll just go ahead and push them, press any button until they turn green. So I'm not sure why this controller failed. Uh, let me go back here again. Maybe the, all the buttons are not working. This is a faulty controller, by the way, and I'm just using it here just to make sure that we could fix the stick drift and show you guys this is like a more of a dummy controller. Uh, ta -ta. So it, it seems like it failed. I'm not sure what buttons are wor not working. Maybe it didn't know. Be gentle to avoid damage. Failed. Yeah, I'm not sure why that said failed at first. Looks like all the buttons are working. So let's see, now we could check the triggers. So the triggers will be active now. Press L2 and R2 triggers to feel the trigger resistance. So yes, I can feel that resistance. Now it's going to vibrate. So pass. Now it's going to check for all the different lights on the controller if they're working properly. Now it's going to check the speaker. So we heard that the tone, so that works. Then you could check your uh, 3.5 millimeter jack as well. And then you could also check your microphone. Test, 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 test. So you can see that the level is here. It's good. So I guess uh, this, so far everything is good in this controller. Now we're going to go and we're going to see that there's a heavy stick drift. This could be an internal problem, uh, but we could, we'll try to see if we could fix it. So what else you can do here is you could zoom in. Uh, so you can see that on normal level, you, there's not much going on. But if we zoom in, we see that this stick is actually off-centered. 
and we could also check the cir circularity. So first we're going to calibrate stick center. Let's see what that does. So we could save changes permanently. So before we click this, anything that we do, if we disconnect it, it's going to go back to how the controller was. So it looks like this uh, stick is not going to fix because this is a really heavy stick drift and there's nothing the software can do because it's an internal problem. But let's just go ahead and check out this other controller I have. So if we do zoom in 10x, we can see that uh, these sticks are a little bit jittering and they are off center. So let's try to see if we can get that fixed. Okay, so as we can see, it got fixed a little bit. If we zoom out, so this one needs to be fixed still. So let's check the circularity. So right now we have about 8.4 and 9.3 uh, calibrate stick range. Rotate the sticks slowly two times in one direction and two times in the other direction. One, two, one, two. So this is a little bit better. So our circularity got better. And then we can do the fine tuning. So we'll do center. So this left stick is selected. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push the direction and now we could use the D-pad to, to bring it down to the center. So now it's zero, zero, leveled out. Let's do the right stick as well. Okay, so now we're done. So now uh, all the sticks are at zero. We have it, um, calibration is pretty good. So now we could save changes permanently. And after we click this, all the changes on this controller are not gonna be reversible. So save success. And we have a pretty nice centered controller that was a little bit off. And I hope this video really reaches out a lot of people and helps them fix the stick drift instead of buying new controllers and giving more money to Sony. Another thing I forgot to mention that this actually also shows your battery life on the controller. So you can see how it's charging. So really, really awesome website. I encourage you guys to use it. Use it at your own discretion, as I said, because once the controller is permanently saved, you cannot reverse any changes. Take care, guys.